look, these are difficult times. And I, I have a lot of sympathy for the Prime Minister in the sense that uh, despite your, your conversation you've just had now, these are global headwinds. And we had to take action around energy support, 120 billion, 150 billion pounds, unplanned, uncosted. And the second immediate challenge that we're all having to navigate, not just the UK, but other countries, is seeking to avoid a recession. And that's what drove the plan to keep a bit more money in people's pockets, to give confidence to households and businesses to try and avoid it. And in theory, during this week, we saw the highest employment level since 1974, growth mark, uh, expected growth to be the strongest of the uh, major economies. But by Friday, we saw then the loss of the Chancellor and the Prime Minister having to do that press conference. It has been very, very tough. But Nobody's suggesting an alternative. This week, the opposition party supported all of those spending plans. So there is no simple, easy fix. The policies seem to be right, but we've had a very, very poor few weeks. We've lost the narrative. We're on the back foot. And you could see the strain on the prime minister when she was doing that hastily arranged press conference. My biggest nightmare, and I, I, I'm grateful that you were able to listen to Scarlett's conversation as well, um, because I reminded her that what I said yesterday when we were covering uh, the Trust press conference is that your party uh, it seems to me to be playing Russian roulette, but with a bullet in every chamber. If, if you get rid of Liz, there's a downside to it. You shuffle the pact of Chancellor and you bring in a guy who, who actually wanted even lower corporation tax, and you're a former ambassador for small businesses, and, uh, and now he's got to implement implement Rishi Sunak's increases uh, in corporation tax. I, I, I've never seen anything quite like it, Justin, where whichever way you look, it seems to me that you are in deep doo-doo. Well, you were, you were certainly filling me with joy with your analogy of the Russian roulette with a loaded, with loaded gun. But, but the, the plus side here, I, you know, Jeremy Hunt, I think he's a good choice. He's a successful businessman in his own right. He's calm. And I think, I think if I was advising the Prime Minister, I think in hindsight, too much was done too quickly. We have a country that's had to navigate Brexit, COVID, leadership contests, now the Russian aggression in Ukraine with the impact on energy prices and cost of living. And frankly, less is more at the moment. Now, Keir Starmer, who previously looked a no hope to become Prime Minister, arguably because he offers what does he stand for? What what would he bring? That's kind of in vogue at the moment. And actually in Jeremy Hunt, he brings that sort of level of calmness, which I think will reassure many of my colleagues who, who are spooked when they look at the opinion polls, because ultimately uh, politicians want to be re-elected. They're there because they enjoy the opportunity they've been given by their respective uh, constituents. But, uh, you know, these are challenging times for the party. And what the country needs, and frankly what our party needs, is some stability and some calmness.